Hello and welcome to Credit Matters TV. I'm Jeff Sexton for Standard & Poor's Insurance Ratings. Today I'm joined by Jason Porter, Associate Director in Standard & Poor's Insurance Ratings, and Miroslav Petkov from our London office, Director in Insurance Ratings. We'll be discussing the risk to reinsurers' capital in light of the 2011 catastrophe year, which was a record-breaking year. With that, I'd like to thank Miroslav and thank Jason for joining us. Miroslav, let me start with you. What did the tale tell us? following this 2011 catastrophe year? The focus of our analysis are the exceedance probability curves, also known as the cat loss uh, curves. These curves show the estimated losses at different probability levels, and the tails of these curves show the estimated losses following extreme events, such as those which are likely to occur every 200 years or less frequently. Uh, by uh, Analyzing details, we identify outliers or those reinsurers which, uh, the exposure, which ex whose exposure to uh, extreme events may appear lower compared to their peers. Uh, one of the analysis we perform to identify uh, the lighter tails is to calculate the ratio between the losses estimated to occur every 250 years to the losses estimated to occur every 50 years. And we have observed significant differences in, uh, in that ratios. And obviously, that ratio will be affected by the different exposures by the reinsurers in terms of geographical, peril, or uh, the level of attachment. However, we believe that a major factor contributing to the differences in the, the values of that ratio is the quantification uh, of the uh, cat risk. So just how bad of a year was it for reinsurers and for the reinsurance industry in 2011? Well, if you look at the losses relative to capital and you look at some of the modeling that's been done by third parties, the um, these third parties have probably placed this event at something less than a one in ten year type event, although some people would have it as a much less frequent event. Now, based on the data that we collect from our companies and their modeling, they would put it just shy of a 1 in 20 year event, which would be consistent with what other third parties would consider it. Jason, given that 2011 was an unusually high year in terms of natural catastrophe uh, activity, as we mentioned, a record-breaking year, what did this say about the industry's performance? And more importantly, was that performance tested? Well, 2011 was a record-breaking year in terms of global catastrophes, and the capital impact was mitigated by excess capital. And the reinsurance industry has generally been resilient because of that excess capital. However, um, when you see the look at the year, the industry has been tested from a number of angles. You had uh, earthquakes in New Zealand, an earthquake in Japan, uh, Thai flooding, the some smaller catastrophes like Hurricane Irene, and you can see that these catastrophes happen, different perils in different regions, uh, really, you know, hit the industry from on all sides. And in some of the losses were a big surprise. For example, the Thailand floods, the losses didn't really come from the, the flooding itself, but from contingent business interruption insurance that was, uh, you know, covered in other regions. So the industry uh, did fare well from a capital perspective and maybe more resilient than you might think of after such a horrific year like 2011 in terms of catastrophe losses. However, if you look at the, um, the peak exposures to the reinsurance industry, more particularly in the U.S., Bermudian and European reinsurance companies, most of those exposures are in the U.S. and in Europe. So the large catastrophes in 2011 did not really impact those regions. And the reinsurance industry could be proud of its 2011 results, but should be wary because if those catastrophes happened in the U.S. or Europe, they could have a much larger impact to capital. So going off of that and mentioning those uh, areas that you talked about where the higher concentration is, U.S. and Europe, what kind of companies could be affected if we were to see an event in those highly concentrated areas? Um, without going to specifics of each individual company, um, the uh, U.S. Bermudian uh, reinsurers would probably, most of those companies would be affected to some extent because that is where the highest concentrations of their catastrophe risks are. Now, if you bifurcate between the U.S. Bermuda companies and the European companies, 
the U.S. and more particularly the Bermudian reinsurers would probably uh, in general be more affected when you look at their catastrophe exposures relative to capital. Uh, you know, remembering that Bermuda companies tend to have been capitalized after large property loss years and they've been largely built to respond to the hard markets that follow those large property loss years. So because of that and because Bermuda has now become a hub for property catastrophe reinsurance, these companies tend to accumulate those exposures in a much more concentrated way. Miroslav, what lessons did we learn from the experience of 2011, which, as noted, was a record-breaking year for natural catastrophe losses? The cat losses in 2011 provided a real test for the adequacy of the cat risk modeling. We believe that those reinsurers whose uh, losses represented a high proportion of the, the 1 in 250-year estimated loss compared to their peers may have underestimated their cat risk exposure. Indeed, uh, we observed that those reinsurers had the lightest uh, tails compared to their peers as measured by the ratio between uh, the losses estimated to occur every 250 years to the losses estimated to occur every 50 years. This uh, shows that uh, reinsurance which may have, which have the, the lighter tails may be underestimating their cat risk exposure and therefore when there is a major catastrophe event they may uh, have uh, losses which uh, outlier compared to their uh, peers. Miroslav, as a follow-up to that question, how do we analyze uh, tail risk exposure at Standard & Poor's? A thin tail may indicate the reinsurer is understating um, its cat risk exposure and therefore they may accept more risk than its risk appetite. Uh, by analyzing uh, the heaviness of the tail, in, in S&P we can identify outliers. And in our rating analysis, we focus on these outliers and perform additional analysis to identify to what extent these companies may be understating their cut risk exposure compared to peers. And if this is the case, we may make adjustment to our uh, capital adequacy assessment and also the ERM assessment will reflect our view of their cut risk modeling capabilities. In some cases, this may even lead to a rating change. And with that, I'd like to thank Jason Porter, Associate Director in Standard & Poor's Insurance Ratings, and Miroslav Petkov, Director in Standard & Poor's Insurance Ratings London office, for this discussion of the risk to reinsurers' capital following the record-breaking year that was 2011. And from all of us here at Standard & Poor's, thank you and take care.